yes, uh, politicians, central bankers, as long as financial assets are elevated and interest rates are under control, uh, they're fine. But they're neglecting the infrastructure. And that's a really important uh, chink in the armor of this whole monetary system. Friday, July 5th, 2024, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. I saw a headline yesterday or a, a post on X or Twitter saying that uh, central bankers now are trying to uh, study the consequences uh, of uh, the massive QE they've been doing or they, they did from 08 to uh, 2021 and uh, how it could have affected things negatively. And I, I responded to it, uh, who'd have thunk it <laughs> that printing trillions and trillions of dollars would cause a problem, right? So we're going to look at uh, a country that I think uh, is setting the pace and could be a harbinger or the first domino to drop in the currency collapse that I think is coming imminently. And what do I mean by imminently? It's difficult to say. It could start next week. It could start next year. But one thing's for sure, when it starts, you want to be out of all fiat currencies as much as possible. And uh, the country, of course, is Japan. And I'm not surprised. I've been covering Japan, the yen carry trade, for years on this channel. And uh, yeah, I've been saying that that's going to be like uh, the canary in, in the coal mine. It's going to be what triggers uh, other currencies to collapse. And the dollar itself, of course, the dollar is at the center, but the yen has been instrumental in keeping this everything bubble going. So we're going to look at uh, the fact that now in Japan, we're starting to see fuel shortages. And, and this is uh, one of the richest countries uh, in the G7, and they're experiencing fuel shortages. And there are many reasons why that is happening. And, and that's what we're going to look at today. Before I go any further, just like to thank all of you uh, again for your interest in the channel. Uh, for the new subscribers as well. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet and you enjoy my videos, make sure you do. Make sure you hit the little notification bell to be notified of all my new videos. And if you want to help the channel in any way, uh, there are ways uh, in which you can do that. They're all, all below in the description. So uh, back, back to Japan. And I'm going to give you a, a little uh, history of what's been happening in Japan since the uh, late 80s, early 1990s. And Japan, of course, has been a pioneer in money printing or QE, zero interest rates or even negative interest rates. But Japan had a, a, a big uh, everything bubble, basically, in the 80s. There was at one point... Uh, the fact that uh, the valuation of the property uh, on which the Imperial Palace uh, sat in Tokyo, uh, it was valued more uh, at more than the whole real estate uh, market of California. That's how crazy it was. And I remember it in the 80s, uh, mid 80s, late 80s, all the talk was about Japan how their economy was so great, management was so great. Japan was at the, t at the, top, of the, at the top of the world in terms of economics. Uh, a little bit like uh, NVIDIA and the U.S. tech sector is right now, I would say. Uh, but then all of a sudden, uh, the Nikkei topped just below 40,000 uh, in late 1989, and it crashed. I, I, I think it went... To, down to 12 eventually, 12,000. And I think recently, of course, it uh, went back to that level uh, after uh, over 30 years. But the problem with, with what happened in Japan is that um, 
Keynesians are in charge in Japan, just like they're in charge in the West. So in the early and mid 90s and throughout and since then, uh, the, the Japanese uh, authorities, be it the finance ministry, the Bank of Japan, uh, the government, they've done everything to keep uh, a lot of the banks uh, afloat. The, uh, the, the term zombie bank, that started out in the 90s with the Japanese banks. And, and why do they uh, want to keep the Japanese banks afloat? Well, because Japanese banks were going to go under because they they made so many bad uh, real estate loans <laughs> uh, and, and the whole uh, real estate market collapsed in Japan. The stock market collapsed. I think real estate collapsed more than 90 percent. And they've kept uh, interfering, keeping everything going. And they've done that through uh, artificially low rates, through the central bank printing uh, trillions upon trillions of dollars, <laughs> not not just yen, um, through uh, f uh, very high fiscal spending by the government on useless uh, projects. And why do I say useless projects? Yes, uh, I do admit some gov government infrastructure pro uh, projects are helpful. But in general, it, it, it's all very corrupt, not just in Japan, but everywhere. And, and that's what we've had. Uh, we've had four decades of uh, complete waste. And uh, of course, the Japanese uh, demographics is not helping. But I think uh, the Keynesian economists focus too much on that. Uh, and they don't focus on the fact that uh, government and the central bank have actually uh, not allowed uh, the, the free market to do its job and, how can I say, reset the Japanese economy. It, it's like they've kept uh, someone who's, yeah, uh, they, they've kept someone on, um, a, a drug addict on drugs instead of having cold turkey. And that, I think uh, we are near the end of the road. And uh, recently I got a message from a, a good friend, and he sent me this story. I hadn't seen it anywhere, and I haven't seen it uh, really in many places, not even on the X, Twitter, or the mainstream or alternative. And the story is this. Japan fuel shortage tanks international flight plans. Uh, and this is what my friend said. And uh, he traveled a lot uh, in the 80s and 90s. Uh, to Eastern Europe. And I quote him, the exact same thing happened in Eastern Europe in the 1990s as the currencies collapsed. I've been on two planes where the captain did a whip round to buy a fuel to get home once in Bulgaria. So there you go. Uh, I think uh, we're near the end in, in terms of uh, the yen. And it's starting to show uh, some uh, cracks, the Japan, the real Japanese economy. So I, I'm going to go over uh, this jet, it's jet fuel shortage in Japan. And I'm going to put a link uh, to a, a, a video uh, on YouTube that talks about this. Uh, I'll tell you uh, where it's from. It, it's from NHK World Japan. Uh, it's a Japanese news. It's in English. And you can listen to it, but uh, I've listened to it and I've done a little bit of a summary. And uh, the more you listen to it, the more you realize that government has a, a lot to do with these problems. So what's happening here is that uh, there's a problem with the supply route for jet fuel in Japan. Um Japan, for example, uh, had 49 refineries uh, in 1983. It peaked at 49 refineries across the whole country. Uh, but again, here we go. Government, uh, they've pushed uh, the economy into uh, using less fossil fuel. So, And also less demand for fuel has basically meant that uh, Japan only has 20 
uh, fuel refineries now uh, uh, across the country. So it's dropped from 49 to 20 in about, well, 40 years. And the other thing as well is that uh, is this push for net zero that hasn't helped. And one thing I would say as well, politicians don't think. All they think about is these uh, policies that are set by world uh, think tanks like the World Economic Forum, Net Zero, <laughs> uh, COP, the COP conferences, and, and, and they don't think of the impact on the economy. And uh, yes, so now they've only got 20 refineries. So uh, what about coastal shipping? That's a really important part of the uh, supply route uh, because uh, the oil goes uh, from the refinery, right? And, and then the coastal ships have to uh, move the uh, jet fuel around and leave them at the oil depot. Then the trucks have to come and uh, transport them to the airports in Japan. But uh, coastal shipping is also a problem because now there's a shortage of ships and it takes two to three years to build new ships. Um, the other uh, problem with coastal shipping, and this is like a, an international rule that says that uh, people working in the coastal shipping industry, people see workers working in the ships, they have to be uh, Japanese nationals, or if it's coastal shipping in the UK, they have to be British. I'm not sure how that uh, is in how, how closely that's enforced in other countries, but in Japan, they've got a shortage of uh, people to work in in the uh, coastal shipping industry. And uh, the other thing that's happened, and uh, you can listen to to the video, is that the, the Japanese government recently passed new uh, labor laws that affects everyone in Japan including people who have to work in the coastal shipping industry. And what's that law? Well, it limits them to the amount of hours they can work. So employers have to basically employ more people. But the problem here is that um, there's a thousand people retiring every year in the coastal shipping industry in Japan. And, and they only... Uh, they're only able to get 400 new recruits every year, and, and they probably even need more than a thousand uh, because the working hours are less. And if you have to ship things a longer way, uh, yeah, it's really disruptive. And you might say, well, yeah, the demographics is not helping because Japanese uh, population is getting older. They can't replace it. Yes, there is some of that, but I would say all these uh, rules, uh, government rules, uh, make it even worse. So one example of how it's affected uh, the uh, airline industry is that uh, with a weaker yen, <laughs> ironically, there's a lot more tourists coming to, to Japan. Uh, Japan's expecting 60 million tourists every year now. And uh, Hokkaido, for example, where Sapporo is, where they, they've had the Winter Olympics there uh, once or twice, I think. Uh, they've gone from having just one refinery, uh, having two refineries, so only having one. So they have a huge shortage uh, of jet fuel. So it has to come from the mainland in Japan to Hokkaido. So, yeah, this could be just a, a one-off and they might fix things. But I think it's more serious and it just goes to show that the politicians, the bureaucrats, the central bankers, all they care is about numbers and the fact that they need to keep servicing the ballooning Japanese debt. Right now, the government debt to GDP is approaching uh, I think 300%. It's just over 250%. And uh, the weaker yen is a huge problem. And today, though, the yen has 
strengthened a little bit because there is speculation of uh, intervention. And as I've said here many times, intervention doesn't really work. I think it's too late for Japan. And I think uh, Japanese government bond yields are going to continue to spike. And uh, yes, I, I think that could break the camel's back in terms of U.S. treasuries and the whole world financial and monetary system. And I think we could be close to that right now when money dies. And I think that's what's happening. And it's going to be very disruptive. Uh, recommend the book, by the way. This is about uh, the currency collapse in the early 1920s, Germany and Central Europe, or the Weimar Republic. Um, so let's quickly look at the markets uh, this morning. It's 8.30 a.m. London time. We've got an important uh, economic statistic today. It's the non-farm payroll. Uh, we'll see how it comes out. Uh, a stronger than expected number could be disruptive for the bond market. We could see yields go back up and vice versa. But anyway, uh, where are we then? Uh, well, we've got spot gold at 2,364. It's up about $7. High's been 66. The low has been 54. Spot silver, that's up 16 cents at 30.55, up half a percent. High's been 71. The low, 27. The uh, Dow futures is down 11. NASDAQ 100 futures up 64. S&P 500 is up 7.5. Yes, uh, politicians, central bankers, as long as financial assets are elevated and interest rates are under control, uh, they're fine. But they're neglecting the infrastructure. And that's a really important uh, chink in the armor of this whole monetary system. Anyway... Let's continue. What about the currencies? Well, uh, sterling is virtually unchanged, 127.70. Uh, the euro, likewise, it's up slightly. And as I said, the yen has come off. Uh, there are stories out there uh, today. I saw in investing.com, it says, Asia FX rises ahead of non-farm payrolls. Yen firms am amid intervention watch. That's the only... Thing that they can that they have it seems the Japanese uh, they have a an endless supply of debt and money printing uh, to keep the debt going but when it comes to uh, the real economy they, they've got no clue and that's very dangerous as I've said before so um, yeah the yen is a bit stronger or the dollar is a bit weaker we're back below 161 we're down about a third of a percent. I think the high recently has been just uh, uh, below 162, 162. Uh, WTI crude is unchanged, 83.66. Brent as well, uh, unchanged at 87.30. High grade copper, uh, that's picking back up. Now that's up 1% at $4.61. And... Uh, The 10-year yield, the U.S. Treasury 10-year yield is up uh, one basis point at 436. So with that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.